Hello, Cody. Come in. Take a seat. Now, tell me, what seems to be your public speaking related problem? Um, pretty much the speaking part. <laughs> okay. Can you can you explore that a little bit more? Yeah. Well, I don't think I speak loud enough when I'm talking to a crowd. I've been told I sound like a robot. And sometimes I get so wrapped up in speaking that I forget to breathe properly and feel lightheaded. Okay, there's, there's definitely a lot we can do here, but I just wanted to say that it's really easy to get wrapped up in the mindset that we're crap at speaking or if someone gives us a rude comment that, uh, you know, you sound like a robot, which is really unhelpful, we can get into that same mindset. And I just wanted to squash that now and say no one is bad at speaking. We do it all the time. We're experts in communication. However, if there are things that you would like to do to improve the way that you speak in a public speaking situation, there is plenty that we can do. So let's break down these queries a little bit more. Um, did you know that a lot of speaking issues actually originate with the way we breathe? Um, the act of speaking itself is done on an out breath. So if we have uh, weak breath control or our breathing is not the best that it could be, it means our speaking will be uh, a little bit worse objectively. Um, so we can definitely start with the breath before we get into a little bit more uh, complex stuff about speaking. So um, I'd like to move into an open space and demonstrate exactly how the way we may be breathing is actually slightly inefficient. Okay, Cody, so what I want you to do is to take a deep breath for me. Okay. Did you know that's actually one of the most inefficient ways to take in breath? Because as you breathe in here, you're constricting your ribs and your lungs actually fill breath all the way down to the bottom. So now I want you to try this and maybe you at home can do this as well. Um, but yawn, just yawn for me. You make me want to yawn as well. <laughs> that is actually one of the most efficient ways to breathe. That is our body fulfilling a natural function to breathe. Um, it's unrestricts the ribs. It allows air to flow all the way to the very bottom of our lungs. And this, is, this type of breathing occurs when we're not thinking about it explicitly. And when we do give thought to it, when we are feeling a little bit restricted with the way we breathe, we actually constrict the air as it tries to fill our lungs. So what we're going to do now is a classic actor's technique. We're going to learn how to breathe diaphragmatically. For those of you at home, this is now another opportunity to follow along with the exercises in whatever way you can. As before, we will have somebody present to demonstrate the techniques sat in a chair. However, to those who can stand, I'd like you to gently stand up now. And if you are unable to follow along with any particular exercise, hold on and join in the next exercise. So using the magic of theater and post hoc editing, let's get into the space all together. Okay, so to learn how to breathe diaphragmatically, what we're going to do is give ourselves another lovely warm embrace. So one arm over the top of the other and bringing it round. This locks off the chest from taking in that really inefficient chest breath. And what I want you to do is just gently flop over at your waist, similar to how we've done before. Relax your neck and your head. I and relax your knees, just unlock those. And just take a moment to breathe here. If you're pointing all the way down, I say this is at six o'clock. So just keep breathing here for the moment. And I want you to really focus on feeling your ribs expand while you're in this position. The ribs surround the lungs, and if they are free to open, and to close as they like, we are filling our lungs to their complete capacity. Now we're slowly going to make our way up. But what we're going to do is bring ourselves up to what I, what I call a sort of eight o'clock position. So basically, you just need to lean up a little bit more and keep that feeling going of breathing and feeling your ribs expand on the in-breath and come in on the out breath. As you breathe in, your ribs expand. And as you breathe out, they come in. So now lean a little bit higher, come up to what feels like 10 o'clock. 
nice and relaxed still. You can feel our ribs expanding on the in-breath and coming in on the out-breath. Now gently come up to what would be 12 o'clock or your natural straight position and feel your ribs expand on that in-breath and come in on that out breath. So you've got it. Keep that feeling going. And then gently remove your arms and put them at your side. Keep that feeling going. Ribs expanding on the in breath and coming in on the out breath. Just focus here for a moment. Just allow your body to breathe in this correct, efficient, diaphragmatic way. Your abdomen should be free from tension. It may mean that it feels like your stomach is coming out a little bit, and that's, that's fine. We're not here to make our stomach look really flat. We're here to breathe efficiently and completely. Okay. If we have that, that's fantastic. So for those watching at home, if you haven't quite got the hang of it yet, that's okay. It can be difficult to learn, but I'm going to ask you to rewind the video and try again until you get this technique. It is an essential skill to learn in public speaking. So that was a really important exercise, but it is only half the battle when it comes to breathing properly. So let's assume we've sorted how we get breath into our lungs, we've expanded our ribs and constricted them properly. But if you remember, our speech is produced on an out breath. So it's time to develop the relationship between the muscularity of the diaphragm, which allows our breath to come out, and indeed the release of the breath. So if you're at home, find a comfortable place to join in this exercise. Uh, if it's difficult for you to, to be continuing with this, that's absolutely fine. Take your time. You can pause. You can come back. You can sit it out and always join at another time. Okay. So now I want us to develop a really strong out breath. So let's return to this feeling of diaphragmatic breathing. And to do that, I want you to uh, put your hands underneath your ribs quite firmly, press them in uh, so that we can really feel uh, the expansion and contraction of the ribs. And just breathe here for a few moments. As you breathe in, you should feel your ribs expand. As you breathe out, they come in. Focus on that feeling for a moment. Okay. Now we're going to achieve what's called a diaphragm bounce to really develop the muscularity of that very important organ to get the air out into our out breath. Um, so to do that, we're going to take our hands away from our ribs, uh, place your hand on your abdomen just sort of over your navel, uh, so that we can focus on the abdomen also expanding as you breathe in, but also on the out-breath that we do in a moment. There needs to be a tension here. This is a really important part of keeping this core very strong uh, because this is a very muscular exercise. So what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to take a nice deep breath in and all on one out-breath, we're going to pant. And to do a quick demonstration, what that looks like is Ha, 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 Okay, we're going to do it together in a moment. But as you gradually get rid of the breath out of your lungs, you should feel a real tension in your abdomen. So Kemi and Cody are going to join in with us. So you're at home, have your hand over your abdomen in your own time. Take a nice diaphragmatic deep breath in. And then release on a pant. Ha, 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 all the way, all the way. Fantastic. Let's do it again one more time. One nice diaphragmatic breath in. And then ha. Ha, 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 Keep going. Let the breath come out. Fantastic. One more time. Let's develop a really nice, strong diaphragm bounce. So a diaphragmatic breath in. And pant. Ha 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 
Very good, very good. It sounds a bit strange, but these are really, really important exercises. What we're going to do now to uh, develop the uh, breath capacity a little bit more and also develop a strong out breath is we're going to take as deep a breath as we possibly can. We're going to blow out. We're going to sort of purse our lips like we do when we whistle. And we're going to blow out for as much as we can until our lungs are completely empty. I want you to really feel an empty lunged feeling. And then as soon as you do, I want you to hold your breath for four seconds and then take a breath in. And we're going to repeat that three to five times. Now I must stress again, if you have any breathing difficulties and this seems to stretch your capabilities, that's absolutely fine. Do what you can, adjust the timings here and there. Uh, but if you really want to work on that diaphragmatic breathing, take the time to do that too. Or if you can follow along, that's brilliant too. So remember, we're going to breathe in. We're going to blow for as long as we can, empty the lungs, hold for four seconds, and then breathe in again. And we're doing that in our own time. Each of us have different breath capacities. So if you want, hands on your ribs. That's what I like to do. And breathe in. And blow out for as much as you can. And when you do, hold for four seconds. And breathe in in your own time. Breathe out in your own time. Empty your lungs. And hold it for four seconds when you've completely emptied your lungs. And in your own time, breathe in again. And release. Doing this one more time. So hold and then breathe in again. <sighs> Empty your lungs. Hold for four seconds and then return to your normal breathing. You can release the pressure on your ribs. In your own time, just end this exercise. Fantastic. Brilliant. So we've developed the foundations for a really free and strong in-breath and out-breath. Remember that these are exercises and exercises fundamental principle is the more regularly you do it, the stronger you get and the more you can do. The best thing is that you can do these exercises, these simple exercises at home when you're washing up and you're showering and you can develop that strength more and more. Now, if we do correct diaphragmatic breathing at our normal breathing pace, not taking deep breaths all the time, this actually helps us lower our stress hormone cortisol. And some people recommend that to calm yourself down, you should take big, deep breaths. And that is actually not so helpful to calm you down. If you're taking deep breaths at an extended rate, your brain thinks you're going to need oxygen for some strenuous activity and actually increases your stress hormone. Think about when you get nervous and you start hyperventilating. Instead, bringing your breathing to a natural, full and steady pace assures your brain that your body is not in a state of stress and so reduces the stress hormone cortisol. Um, so what I want us to do now is just to practice breathing diaphragmatically at a natural pace, at a natural rate. So however that works for you, I like to hold my ribs and just ensure that I'm doing it properly. I just want you to breathe at your normal rate. You're not taking in deep breaths in and out, but just breathe here. Just take a few moments to do this. And for me, it feels like a small expansion and a small contraction. That's all it is. Our exercises were developing the muscularity to do this action, but now what we're doing is putting that into practice to do it more naturally. It does take practice. It absolutely does. I learned how to do it when I was washing up. So just take this time to breathe at your natural pace, making sure it is diaphragmatic. And you can come back to this. You can come back to the content. You can practice it in your own time and make sure you really get it bang on. OK, thanks very much, Kemi and Cody, for demonstrating. Um, are we all good? Do we know how to breathe diaphragmatically? I can't see if you're putting your thumbs up, but I'm going to take that as a yes. So. We're going to go uh, back to our conversation, Cody, and just recap on what we've touched on. <laughs> okay, Cody, how are you feeling now that you know how to breathe diaphragmatically? Well, 
I didn't know that what I was doing wasn't breathing properly, but I can feel the difference already. Though I think I will need to practice more to make it feel more natural. Yep, you're absolutely right. It's like any exercise, it gets easier with practice. We get better at it with practice. Um, but I want to go back to something we were talking about earlier and how you were saying that you speak quietly. Um, so can you explore that in a bit more detail? Tell me why you think you might speak quietly. Um, well, it's just in those crowd situations that I don't think I speak loud enough. Okay, so if you know you don't speak loudly enough in that situation, what's holding you back from being louder? I don't know. I don't want to shout or sound stupid. Okay, there we go. That makes absolute sense. It sounds like we need to develop the trust that you have in your voice to free the sound into volume. Uh, it's the main tool that we have to communicate with people, so why wouldn't we want you to be heard? Now, as we approach this work, um, for you and for those watching at home as well, I want everyone to leave their negative thoughts about their voice behind. As we work on freeing the voice and galvanizing it to really work for you, we need to trust it and we need to leave our negative thoughts about it behind. Um, Cody, are you ready to leave your judgment and your negative thoughts about your voice at the door? I guess so, yeah. Fabulous. Then would you like to snap us back into the magical demonstration mode? I would love to. Okay, as before, we have exercises you can complete standing and demonstrations of these exercises sitting. So please take these at your own pace. And if you need to sit out one activity and join in the next one, please do. Otherwise, please bring everything you can to the next exercises. Now, our breathing technique is pivotal here. We need to be using the incredibly powerful muscle, the diaphragm, in order to give our voice power and volume to fill up the room. However, I don't want you to be placing undue attention on the biology of speaking, because if we're breathing diaphragmatically, we've got a good posture, the body will take care of itself. We need to give it the right sort of stimulus in order to react appropriately. So what we're going to do now is use that muscularity of breath to power a few phrases. Similar to our panting exercise, we're going to pant the first word of a phrase before we go into the full phrase and sustain the voice. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean now. So I'm gonna take in a nice diaphragmatic breath and pant out the word hi. Hi, 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 hi. hi, hi, hi. hi. So I did four pants of the word high, and the final high was the fifth one. I'll do it again. It's all on one breath, and I'm sustaining the fifth high. Breath in. High, 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 high. high, high, high. high. Okay, now we're going to do it together. Um, I'm gonna count down from three to one. I want you at home to join in with us. We are all doing this in the spirit of camaraderie with you. Place your hand over your abdomen or underneath your ribs or not at all, whatever is comfortable for you. And breathe in. Three, two, one. Hi, 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 hi. hi, hi. hi. Very good. Now we're going to pant into the phrase, how are you? And to demonstrate, that will look like, how, 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 how are you? So breathe in. Three, two, one. How, 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 how are you? Very good. Now we're going to pant into the phrase, I'm fine, thanks. And I want you to put an H at the front of the word I'm because it's much easier to give our voice power with an H pant sound. So to demonstrate, that looks like, I'm, 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 I'm fine, thanks, how are you? Okay, we ready to try that all together with you at home joining in too? Breathe in. Three, two, one. Hi, 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 fine, 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 thanks. Fine. How are you? Very good. Okay, so with this technique down, so what we're going to try now is panting into two full phrases. The first one is, hi, how are you? We're going to do that same uh, four pants um, on hi, 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 how are you? And we're going to make sure it is full of our breath. So we're going to try this together. Take your deep diaphragmatic breath in. 
three, two, one. Hi, 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 hi. How are you? Very good. Now we're going to pant into the phrase, "I'm fine, thanks. How are you?" And please again put the H in front of the I, so it's "I'm fine, thanks. How are you?" So if we're ready, all together, take a nice diaphragmatic breath in. Three, two, one. Hi, 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 hi. I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Very good. Did you feel that tension in your abdomen as you sustained the phrase? That is the muscularity we are looking to achieve. We're not going to pant all the time, but that is the action we want to ensure that the breath really pushes out of the lungs to fuel our words. Okay, so if we've got the technique down, Cody, I want you to put it into practice with reaching things at a distance. So let me snap us into another setup. Okay, so those at home, watch what I'm going to do with Cody、uh, very closely. You're going to get a chance to practice this yourself in a moment. But I just want you to focus on what we're learning right now.、Um, so, Cody, what I want you to do is we're going to do a little projection exercises using the muscularity of the breath that we've just practiced with our panting. What I'm going to get you to do is to put your hands on your ribs,、um, if that feels comfortable for you, so that you can feel you are definitely doing. A good diaphragmatic breath. Then what you're going to do is imagine your voice as、uh, a travelling object. When it comes out your mouth, it looks like something like a bullet, an arrow, a shock wave in the air, a laser, even. However, it looks for you. I want you to put a picture to your voice. This will really help with hitting me to make、uh, your voice transform into volume and loudness. So you're going to take that breath. You're going to picture your voice traveling into me, trusting in the muscularity of that breath, in the pant that we've done earlier, into the phrase "Hi, how are you?" Does that make sense?、Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, at this distance right now, I want you to use your voice as an object to hit me in the face or the chest or wherever, <laughs> and to pant into "Hi, how are you?" Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Fantastic. Go for it in your own time. Hi, how are you? Bang on! That's really good. See if you can sustain that volume a little bit more throughout. Your high was very good. That hit me completely where I am. See if you can sustain that impact throughout the sentence. Try that again. Hi, how are you? Bang on! Very, very good. Very good. I'm going to take a step back. Try and do the same thing. Hi, how are you? Very good. Very. I'm going to keep taking a step back. Try again. Hi, how are you? Very good. Try that again one more time. Sustain it all the way to the end of the phrase. One more time. Hi, how are you? Very good. I'm going to go to the edge of the frame now, and I want you to hit me with your voice. Hi, how are you? Very good. One more time. Hi, how are you? Very, very good. Powerful voice. Hit me exactly where I am. Now, all you need to do is whenever you're speaking to people in public, your public speaking environment. You need to imagine your voice hitting them, however that looks like. You're not going to be panting into every phrase, of course, but visualizing your voice, putting that muscularity behind your outbreath, will transform that into volume. Because I can hear you loud and clear right here. Okay, how did that feel? Pretty cool.、Um, I felt like my voice had power, and when I thought about where it needed to travel. I knew I was being louder, but I was more focused on hitting you. Yes, very, very good. It's just about giving again that mind-body voice connection is all really, really important. We just need to give our voice and our brain a little bit more stimuli when we're thinking about how we're reaching people in public speaking situations, and the rest of it takes care of itself. Especially if we work on developing it with these exercises. Now it's your turn at home. If possible, and you're somewhere private, I want you to practice something similar. You can have an object replace me, or indeed, you could get another friendly human to help you out with this particular exercise. Or you can remain static and focus this activity on any other object within your eye line. Gradually increase the distance you need to reach that thing with your voice. Change it up and trust in your mind to tell your voice what it needs to do. 
The key is to give something for your mind to focus on when you're projecting your voice, ensuring you are breathing from the diaphragm and giving power to the phrase, hi, how are you? I'm going to leave the instructions on screen, but take five to 10 minutes doing that. Time yourself if possible and give some time to practice the effective projection of your voice. So please pause the video here and join us again when you're ready. Have you finished the activity? Does it feel comfortable or did it become more comfortable as you went on? Remember, this is a process or a journey. If you're not seeing progress straight away, that is fine. The important thing is that you practice. And if in this course you gather the tools and knowledge to inform your practice, that's a fantastic thing for you to be able to take away. Okay, so um, I want to address the concern that you raised earlier about sounding like a robot. Um, what is this about? Um, well, I don't think I sound very interesting when I'm talking and sometimes when I'm doing presentations I've noticed people looking bored and I can't say I blame them really. Interesting. It's, you don't sound boring, you don't sound monotone to me when we're having this conversation right now. Yeah, but that's different. Ah, but why is it different? Because in a presentation I'm talking from a script and it's an intimidating situation. I get that absolutely and completely, but it, it's, it's fascinating how when we're not thinking about the way we're speaking in a conversation, we don't have to worry about sounding boring or sounding not because we get passionate, we get humorous, we naturally vary our pitch and our variance, we react very naturally in that situation. But as soon as we get up on stage uh, or in a public speaking situation, it's like all of that switches off and we undergo a transformation in the way we speak. But the thing is the audience doesn't undergo a transformation in the way they prefer to hear things. The audience is exactly the same as someone you're having a conversation with, just on a larger scale. They get absolutely excited by the same things we do in conversation. Variance in pitch, tone, pace. And so what we really want to do is just uh, focus our thoughts a little bit more on developing that awareness of the variance that we do normally in conversation and develop it, make it feel natural and true in a public speaking situation. Um, so the first thing that I want you to do is uh, to encourage you to extend your range. Uh, and this refers to your pitch specifically in the way that you speak. So to do this, I've got a pretty fun exercise and uh, to make it a little bit more fun, we're gonna do it as a larger group. So I need some more willing participants. I'm gonna snap us into the situation now. Here we go. Please join us at home for following the next exercise. You're gonna be making some noise here, but I wouldn't be asking you to do anything unless it was necessary for your development. So what we're going to be doing is to exercise our voice and to warm up the funny little vocal cords which vibrate and create the noise which makes our voice. We're going to find our middle note and hum. But what I really want to do is achieve a sort of vibration in your mouth and around your lips doing this hum. And now just to demonstrate what I'm talking about here, it feels like you're placing your voice here as opposed to humming up here or down here. That is the hum that I'm wanting you to achieve. And if you put your teeth together, you can also feel them vibrating and feel that buzz in your mouth and around your lips. So joining in with us is Cody and Josh. So when you're ready and in your own time, take a breath and start humming and do it for as long as I say. So breathe in and hum. Mm, feel that buzz, please. Mm, hum a little bit louder, keep going. Mm, can you feel the vibration at home? Keep going, guys, keep going. Mm, And now just start humming a bit of a tune as well, just to exercise the voice. And stop there, very good. So humming is one of the best exercises you can do to warm up your voice. 
We're going to take it a step further now and exercise our range. Uh, because as we were speaking about earlier, it's very easy to stay on the same few notes when we're speaking, to speak very boring and in a monotone voice. But if we don't go up and down in our pitch, it doesn't sound very interesting. So what we want to do is exercise our voice to be comfortable speaking a bit higher and to exercise our voice to feel comfortable coming down a little bit lower. So to do that, we're going to be on a vocal roller coaster. And what this looks like is you have your finger out here and this is your roller coaster. And as your roller coaster goes down, so does your voice in pitch. It goes down and you go, ooh, like this. Ooh. And as the roller coaster comes up, it goes into an E sound. So it sounds like this. Ooh. -ee. And you just draw out your own individual roller coaster. And you can make it go up really high and down really low. You can make it do lovely little spirals and see what that does to your voice. I just want you to stretch the absolute highest that you can go comfortably and the absolute lowest that you can go comfortably. Um, so, Cody and Josh, do you have your roller coasters at the ready? Those at home, if you have your roller coasters ready too, we're just going to be doing this for a short amount of time. I will tell you when to stop. But your roller coaster begins now. Keep on going. We'll stop it there. Did everyone enjoy their little roller coaster rides? It sounds absolutely strange, I am sure, but if we don't exercise our range, we won't know the extent to which we can vary our pitch in our speaking. Okay, so with just those simple, if slightly strange sounding exercises, we've exercised our voice and our range. Maybe we reached pitches that we don't ever use in our speaking voice and maybe only used to sing in the shower or the car. However, if we all have this range in our voice, why do we only stick to one monotone note? Having exercised and tested our voice, we can now apply this newfound range onto our speech. Of course, if this is something you're not used to doing, there will be an element of experimentation. But without trying it out, we won't know what works and what doesn't. Right. Before we put this into practice, I want to do a final few exercises to make sure we are ready. When I say the word articulation, you may have a certain image in your mind. Maybe my fair lady with the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane, or old-fashioned ideals which purport received pronunciation to be the superior of accents and superior to any accent, whether it's regional or international. But modern day communication training does not hold these values. And instead, with articulation exercises, we aim to exercise the components of our voice that are responsible for forming sound into words. Put simply, I want to exercise our jaw, tongue and lips. So again, volunteers here and you at home, I would like you to follow along with the following exercises. Okay, so what I want to exercise first is the jaw the very important region to make sure that you are providing muscularity to the words you're saying. If we don't move our jaw enough, we can't get the words out and sometimes get a bit tongue-tied. So to exercise the jaw, I want you to imagine you've got that sticky toffee, you're putting it in your mouth and you are giving it a good old chew. So go for that now. Cody, Josh, join in. Don't worry about making mouth noises, keep going. No one looks attractive eating a toffee. It is fine. Keep going. Exercise the jaw up and down, side to side. Very good. If it begins to hurt at all, just massage the hinges of your jaw. Remember, we're not trying to hurt ourselves. We're warming ourselves up. Okay. And bring that toffee to a close. Then I want to go back to that two finger drop. Um, which is two fingers width. 
and open and close it. Just exercising the hinges here as we open and close, open and close. Very good. You can stop there. Now we're going to do some more specific articulation exercises. And to do that, you need to find a pen or a pencil nearby. Uh, because if you're comfortable, we're going to be putting this in our mouth. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, I'll explain an alternative in a moment. But for those who are comfortable, you want to place the pencil just behind your front teeth, nice and loosely, there. You need to not bite down on it too hard. We're not trying to bite it to keep it in place. We are literally just propping our jaw open a bit so that we can really exercise our lips, our jaw, to make the sounds that we want to make. Um, and then it should be easier when we remove the pencil. Uh, if you're not comfortable using a pencil or a pen or putting anything in your mouth, uh, you can isolate your uh, lip and mouth area by placing the fingers, your fingers, to the corners of your lips and just letting your jaw hang open as you begin the articulation exercises. This just encourages you to make a bit more space in your mouth rather than propping it open with something like a pen or a pencil. Um, however, if you are comfortable, pop it in now. And what you're going to say with the pen or pencil in your mouth is the following. La 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 la, la 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 la. You're going to do that as many times um, as I say. And you're going to do that with the pencil in your mouth, just going la 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la. Okay? Pencils in if you feel comfortable. If not, fingers on the corner of your mouth. And in your own time, go la 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 la, 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 la 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 la. Okay, bring it to a close. Uh, now, what you're going to do to exercise the real tip of the tongue is go ta 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 da 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 ta 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 da 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 da. I really want you to focus on getting these noises very very clear, even with a pencil in your mouth uh, or isolating your mouth. Indeed. So, in your own time, go ta 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 da 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 ta 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 da 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 ta 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 da 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 ta 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 da 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 da. Okay. Then you're going to exercise your lips or your mouth with ma 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 ba 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 ma 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 ba 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 ba. Okay. Uh, place your pencil in if you're comfortable, or isolate, and go ma 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 ba 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 ma 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 ba 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 okay very good now if you had a pencil in your mouth feel free to take it out pop it in your pocket if you are isolating your mouth with your fingers feel free to move them away now, um, if you haven't had it absolutely perfect uh, making those noises, that's fine. We've exercised all the areas which are really important for making these noises. So now when we try it without something propping our jaw open, it should be a little bit easier. So we're going to start with la 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 all over again, all the way through the three noises we're going to make. So try that together with us here. La 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 very good very clear now the tip of the tongue ta 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 da 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 ta 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 da 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 together ta 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 da 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 very good. Now, ma 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 ba 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 ba. Okay. Ma 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 ba 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 ba. Ma 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 ba 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 ba. Very good. Okay. What we've done now is loosen the jaw to be free of tension exercise the tongue and lips for clarity of spoken word. 
Uh, we're ready to look at a piece of text now. And what I'm going to do is look at this piece of text. I'm going to highlight some opportunities to put some of this learning into practice. We know how to breathe efficiently. We know how to fuel our words with powerful breath. And we've warmed ourselves up, ready to implement some variety in our speech. We're going to take a look at what I've prepared in a moment. But now I'm going to be getting Cody to demonstrate. And then for those at home, I'd like you to have a go for yourself. So take a look at this animation I've prepared to explain this piece of text. OK, so now let's have a look at how we can be injecting some vocal variety into our performance. So what I've got here is just an abstract to a paper, something which doesn't scream interesting or exciting. But I'm going to show you how we can make it exciting. To begin with, I'm going to highlight all the punctuation that we see in the abstract. This really helps to inform our performance about when we need to slow down, when we need to allow emphasis, or when we need to go up at the end of our sentence if it's a question. Why is it that we have no problem paying attention to the grammar when we write sentences, but not when we're speaking? This can really help connect us and focus us on the words and the message that we're trying to say. Next, I'm going to help you add melody to your voice. It is an instrument. I know that may sound a little bit pretentious, but your voice is an instrument. So let's treat the words that we're saying like music. To start with, the first thing you say should be the most impactful. That is what grabs your audience's attention. If you start weak, you're only going to have to struggle to pick up that energy and pick up that motivation again. Next, I'm highlighting areas where I think you should be showing emphasis. This is either because it's detailed information or it's something that I want the audience to pay attention to. The way you emphasize this, it's generally up to you. You might want to increase your volume, you might want to increase your enunciation, but either way, allow your voice to emphasize the important parts of the speech. Next, I've highlighted places where I think it would be helpful to slow down, either because it's quite complex information that's difficult to deconstruct and I'm giving the audience time to think or just to vary the tone, the pace of what we're saying to keep the audience interested. The effect of paying attention to the way we're speaking can be enormous to help keep the audience interested. Now, this shouldn't become obsessive, it should feel natural. The way I've just highlighted it is one way that I've deconstructed the information that I see on the paper. But this should be a personal choice as well. If you take anything from this animation, it's that you have the tools available to you to make your words interesting. Now have a play for yourself. You can utilize grammar to inform your vocal performance. You can utilize emphasis and you can utilize pace. All of these things will generate impact to keep your audience entertained. Matte surfaces, that is those that are dull or lusterless, not glossy and shiny, are a current trend in packaging. But does packaging surface affect what consumers think about the product inside it? We focus on consumers' perception of packaged food products at the point of sale. Using three experiments, we show that food in matte packaging can be perceived as more natural. Notably, the effect of matte packaging only holds for rather artificial products. When matte packaging increases perceptions of product naturalness, consumers also expect the product to be tastier and are more likely to buy it. Fantastic. Thanks, Cody. For those of you at home, it's now your turn. I'm going to have the text on the screen now, and I'd like you to have a go at reading it. For those who would prefer to view this differently for whatever reason, there is an unhighlighted and highlighted version in the attached resources for this video for you to edit as you may require for whatever reading needs you have. So please pause the video and have a go at applying all your learning from this session into this piece of text. So, 
Cody, when we started the session, you were finding issue with the speaking part of public speaking. How do you feel now? Well, there's a lot to take in, but I did notice a difference when I was doing the breathing exercises and I have something to focus on when I want to speak louder now. There's a lot that goes into speaking that I've never really thought about. I've never thought about it in terms of pitch, range, variance, pauses or emphasis, but having given thought to it and knowing more about it, I feel better about not sounding like a robot. <laughs> Not that you'd sound like a robot anyway. All we did was help to release the potential of your voice, give a little bit more thought to how we do that in a public speaking situation. And I can see that you've benefited from that. And hopefully those at home have too. So that brings us to a close with our practical workshops. Um, I'd encourage you to click onto video five now just to wrap up the work and bring it all together. So feel free to move to that one now.